Okay, so <clears throat> welcome back to another discussion on our uh, registered master electrician online review. So we will continue solving problems that are similar to the problems that have recently came out on the recent uh, RME board exam. So last time we have solved eight problems. So that eight problem was those eight problems are. Um, divided into two videos so now we will um, try to answer more problems so as always we have here our trusted calculator the 570 ES calculator that we'll be using okay so let's start solving some problems okay so we will go now to problem number nine a lamp has a hot resistance of 40 ohms, so the power rating in watts of, of the lamp is blank. So in here, we need to solve for the power of the lamp or the power rating of the lamp. Okay, so we'll write our solution. Okay, so the given, we have the voltage, which is equal to 200 volts. Then we have the resistance, which is equal to um, 400 ohms. So because this involved resistance and power, so I will use our two triangles. So first we will have our ohm's law triangle. Okay. So ohm's law. So at the top, that is our E or the voltage. Then I, then here we have our R, then next we have also here the power triangle, so we have the P, the E, and the I, okay. So we are required to solve for D, so let's have this one in red, we are required to solve for D power okay so the given we have the voltage and the resistance now in order to solve for the power so if you if you are going to look at the power triangle so the in solving the power so we will be covering the p in our power triangle so that is equal to p p is equal to e times i so we could have that one as let's write that formula as P is equal to E times I but we don't have our I we have our E as our given the voltage as the given but we don't have our I so we need to first solve for the I and in order to solve for that we must use our Ohm's law triangle this one so we'll cover the I so our formula will become I is equal to, so E over R, E over R, okay, so we have our E and we have our R, so we can now solve that one, so we have 200 volts, that is the given voltage, over 400 ohms. So our I is equal to, so we'll use our calculator here. Let's move that one on this side. So 200 divided by 400. So 200 divided by 400, that is equal to 1 half or 0.5. So we have 0 0.5, 0 0.5 amperes. Okay. So we now have our current, then we have the voltage, the given, so we cannot solve for our power. So our power now is equal to the voltage, which is the 200 volts, and the current, which is the one that we have already solved, that is 0 0.5 amperes. So our power now, 
is equal to 100 watts. And this is now our answer. Okay, so because 0.5 of 200 is 100. So that is now our answer. So let's proceed to another example. So this is this problem, it uh, has a similar concept with the problem number 8. So we will now proceed to problem number 9. Okay, so let me um, adjust first my microphone. Okay, so what voltage would be required to produce a flow of 10 amperes through a resistance of 12 ohms. Okay, so this is very easy. So let's just do the solution here. Solution. So the given, we have the I as 10 amperes. And the resistance is equal to 12 ohms. And we are trying to find the voltage so our e is unknown and because this uh, this does not involve power so we just have the ohms law triangle in order to help us solve for the voltage so this is e i times r okay so substituting the uh, first we need to get the formula so we cover the E, so what remains is E time uh, I times R. So we will have the formula in solving for our E. So E is equal to I times R. So substituting the given or substituting the given. So we have 10 amperes times R is 12. So 12 ohms so we have now 120 volts and that is now our answer so basic ohms law problem okay let's proceed to another problem problem number 11 okay okay so we have here uh 200 volt uh, voltage of 20 volt applied across a terminal of 2.5 ohm rheostat. So calculate the power dissipated in the rheostat. So usually this problem will require for us to have the diagram. So let's draw the diagram. So we have a 20 volt supply so let's just have that one in a battery so 20 volt battery then we have the this is connected to a 2.5 ohm rheostat so this is a variable resistor okay so this is our e we have our r then we have our I here. So this is a very vis uh, basic circuit. So I. Okay, so let's just put the given. So our voltage, so this one, the voltage in this one is 20 volts. Let's change the color. Okay, this is 20 volts. And our R is equal to 2.5 ohms. So, the problem is calculate the power dissipated or the power that is consumed by the rheostat, the 2.5 uh, ohm rheostat. So, we need to find the power on our rheostat. Okay? So, because this involves um, power, so we will use again the two triangles. So, first we will use the I will draw first the Ohm's law triangle. Okay. So by how many problems that we are using this Ohm's law triangle. So I guess you will be able to get familiarized on how to draw the Ohm's law triangle. Then also we will draw the power triangle. Okay. So we have here the P and the E and the 
i. So we are required to solve for the power. And in order for us to solve for the power, so if we cover our power, this one, the p, so p is equal to e times i. So we have our e, the 20 volt, the voltage the give, is given, but we don't have our i, so we'll go to the Ohm's law triangle. So we, we cover i, this one, so our formula will become i is equal to e over r so substituting or substituting sorry i usually discuss with my student uh, using the word substituting so it's it's substituting so substituting the given so our voltage e is 20 volts our r is 2.5 ohms so we have we can solve now for our current so let's call upon the mighty powers of our calculator so 2.5 we have 8 so this is equivalent to 8 amperes okay so we can now use this one to this formula in order for us to solve for the power so p is equal to the given voltage is 20 volts and our current is 8 Beers. So our power is equal to 160 watts. So 20 times 8, 160 watts. And that is now our answer. So if there is a need for us to draw the equivalent diagram, especially if the problem um, uh, needs to have a diagram, because the diagram will help us to visualize what are the parameters what are the given and what is required in the problem but there there are some problems also that doesn't require to have a diagram okay so let's go to problem number 12 so a secondary cell is charged with a constant current of 10 amperes for 10 hours how much charge is accumulated? Okay, so let's solve this one. So this is one of the problems involving current, charge, and time. Okay, so by definition of the current, so current is equal to charge per unit time. Okay, so checking the units. The units for current is ampere, the unit for charge is column, and the unit for time is seconds. Then we will go to writing our given. So our I is 10 amperes. Our column or the charge, so that is Q, is unknown. And our time is 10 hours okay so checking the units so amperes for current the charge is unknown so the answer will be in columns and the time is in seconds but this is in hours so we will convert this one into seconds so we have 60 minutes is to 1 hour and 60 seconds is to 1 minute so this is the conversion of hours to second so we'll use our trusted calculator so that will be 10 times 60 multiply by 60 so we have 36,000 so 36,000 seconds okay so now we will solve our Q so going back to this formula so if we are going to transfer our 
t here so that will be multiplied to our i so our charge so our charge will now become i times t so let's just substitute this one so our current is 10 amperes multiplied by our time which is equivalent to 36 thousand seconds okay so our answer will, will be uh, 10 times 36 thousand okay so that is equal to 360 thousand columns we have 360 thousand columns and that is our answer so the formula is i is equal to q over t so i believe we have similar problems from the previous video so problem similar to this one okay let's proceed to problem number 13 so i'll just be looking on the time so 16 minutes have passed okay so we have two resistors of resistance okay so there is there is a problem with this uh, there is uh, some lacking problem with this problem okay so let's just try to analyze this one okay two resistors of resistance ohms and 7 ohms are connected in series across a 60 volt source what is the power absorbed in the 5 ohm resistor okay so i believe because this is 5 ohm so this must be 5 ohms okay so that is by analysis so we just did the get the value okay so 5 ohms okay so this problem requires a diagram so we have here the source okay so the first we have two resistance in series or two resistors in series so please do understand my diagram so there are lines that is not straight so 60 volts then we have 5 ohms and we have 7 ohms so we need to get the power okay so we just put the label this is our e this is our e1 and we have our e2 we have our here our i okay and our uh, maybe that is all so we need to find the power in, in here our p1 okay in order to solve for P1, so this is the green one, P1 is equal to E1 times uh, I1 times E1 or E1 times I1 is the same. So we need to get the value of current at the resistor 5 ohms and the voltage drop at the resistor 5 ohms. Okay. So, there is a longer way in solving this one. Maybe I will be showing that later. There is the shorter way. So, first, I will use the shorter way. Okay. So, first, we need to solve for I1. Okay. So, I1, because this is a series circuit, this is equivalent to E. So, the, because we know in the series circuit, the current in the whole circuit or the total current is equal to the current flowing in every resistors or in every load so that is one of the uh, characteristics of a series circuit and by using ohms law this is equal to e over rt or total current and our rt is just the sum of the resistors in series so we have here this is 60 volts so this is equal to R1 plus R2 or this is 5 ohms plus uh, 7 
ohms. So we have 6 volts over 12 ohms. And this is equivalent to, I believe that is 5, but let's just uh, double check. 6 over 12, so equal to 5. So this is 5 amperes. And this is now our E1. Now, in order for solve to solve for E1, so that this is our I1. So this our I1 is equal to 5 amperes. And in order, in order for us to solve for E1, so we can use... VDT. So by VDT or voltage division theorem. So by VDT, so we have E1 is equal to the total voltage of the voltage source times R1 over R1 plus R2. So we have 60 volts, that is our voltage source, times R1, which is 5 ohms, over 5 ohms plus 12 ohms. So we will have, we can directly input this one into our calculator. So we have 60 times 5 over 5 plus, uh, this is not 12, I believe that is, um, that is equal to 7. So I made the total immediately. So this is equal to 7. Okay, 7. So go back, going back to our calculator, so 7. So we'll have 25. 25 volts okay so because we have solved for our i1 and e1 so we can now substitute this one into the formula in order for, for us to solve for the required in the problem so we have 5 amperes times 25 volts so we have 5 times 25 so this is equal to 125 so 125 watts and that is now our answer so let's have the longer method in solving this one so the longer method also involves the same first step in which we are going to solve for our i which is equivalent to e over rt so this is equal to 60 so r1 plus r2 that is 5 plus 7 so we know the answer for that one is 5 amperes then We'll be solving for E1. So our E1, by using Ohm's law, E1 is equal to, let's write first the Ohm's law triangle so that we could have the proper solution. So that we'll not be wondering where do I get the formula. Okay, so we have E1, then this is I1, and this is our R. One, okay. So, E one will be equal to I one times R one. So we will be covering the E here. So we have uh, because I one is E one. Uh, I one is equal to I. So this is equal to five amperes times. 5 ohms. Our R1 is 5. So this is equal to 25 volts. And this is still the same this with this one. So we'll also use the same formula E times I or I times E. So to have uniformity, we just use 
e times uh, i times e so this is equal to 5 amperes so this will be i i1 and e1 times 25 volts and we still have the same answer which is 125 watts and that is the same so you could use this formula if you are able to familiarize or memorize the um, the formula for voltage division theorem or you can use the this much longer method in which you are going to use uh, Ohm's law triangle and power triangle okay so that will be all for this part of the solve problem videos so if you have any questions clarifications comments so you can always um, comment below the uh, the video or in the comment section and thank you for your positive comments on the previous video and hope you understand uh, my explanation and i hope you learned something from this video and thank you for watching in order to pass the exam keep studying